Man, I think just it was a four-point game going to that last time out there in the first half. What happened thereafter that they created that cushion? Yeah, you know, we just had um, you know too many defensive breakdowns there, and they made us pay for them. Um, made a couple threes in that stretch, and uh, you know we just you know I can't go back and just have the best memory in the world in terms of every possession in the last four minutes, but. We just got the ball, you know, at the rim, you know, whether it was post play or offensive rebound or a drive, and just didn't convert. You know, we we had to be able to convert and uh, and get our low post game established, and you know, get to the free throw line more. But we just had to simply make more shots, and uh, obviously in that stretch there, we had too many breakdowns defensively. Matt, all three players that were in here said something about lack of fight, and I think they said you said something like that yeah. to them. This is not what we're used to hearing from you guys. What do you right. think is going on? Well, I, I think it's the same thing that we've had throughout the course of a year is that when you know shots don't go down or we can't pick up, whether that's the passion or the morale or whatever you want to you know, kind of categorize it, um, you know, just hanging our head and allowing one mistake to lead to two and just simply compounding um, our mistakes, you know, missing a shot on one end, hanging your head, not you know, getting your defensive assignment um, on the other end, or vice versa. So, um, just have to do a better job of dealing with adversity. And um, when we have those stretches and those laws where it really hurts us. Obviously, we have it more on the road than we do at home. And uh, it was kind of shocking, to be honest with you, when you when you get into those stretches, and um, you know, you got to be able to respond because I, I when you really look back at this game. I think that's the difference in the game. The last four minutes of the first half end up, ends up being the difference in the game, in my opinion. We never get that back. And um, you know, we just have to do a better job of concentrating on the defensive end and competing and, and then converting on the offensive end. You know, I thought we had some, some, some good efforts on the glass. Um, we gave up a couple offensive rebounds there in the second half that uh, when you're fighting to get back in the game, you just don't have it. But um, just, just too many defensive breakdowns. I thought the start of the second half, um, they just missed, and to be frank with you. First four or five minutes, and Michigan missed. It wasn't us making them miss. I just felt like they missed, and so they didn't play that good. And uh, Michigan play, Michigan can play a lot better than that. Brooks, you know, wasn't out there for him, you know, for half the game because he got hit in the nose. Um, and, and, and so, uh, you know, it, it was one of those games that was there for us, but we just had to play better, and we didn't. Matt, when you, when you look at the statue, they only had three turnovers. Is that more of a you look at it more of an indictment on your defense or just the fact that they I would they look at it as both. Uh, we turned them over at their place. And, you know, it's just when you're looking at it from your perspective, you know, from my perspective is that, you know, we're not active enough with our hands. Um, if you look at it from their perspective, you know, they took care of the basketball. They have one of the best point guards in terms of ball control in the country. You know, he is a you know, fabulous player, very intelligent player, understands the game. And uh, I thought they did a good job of keeping the ball in his hands. But the other guys made good decisions. I thought, you know, Wagner, you know, had a fabulous game. And um, overall, they had they had better decision making than we did. And uh, you know, you have to be able to convert some shots, but you also got to keep getting those good shots, even if you're missing some of them. But um, give them credit. You know, I, from my perspective, I, I think we, we had to be more active and um, enforce more turnovers. But uh, you know, they, they played well and took care of the basketball. The term concentrations came up a lot this season. Yeah. Um, do you see the attention to detail being where it needs to be right now, especially at the defensive end? No, not at all. I, I think we, we go back and forth where we will have some. It'll be particular scouting reports, too, like particular people will give right. us more trouble than others. Um, but just today, you know, we had a couple back cuts where guys only, you know, are just not even paying attention. And they, they back cut and get layups, you know, things of that nature. Like when you're dealing with multiple ball screens and Guys are seesawing back and forth. Like you're going to get into some tough spots, especially when you deal with size that's skilled. You know, you get some of those guys that can pick and pop as five men or, or dive and get into multiple actions. Those those get tough to defend. You got to do your best. You got to have the lesser of two evils. You got to make it hard on them. But like we're we're getting back cut. Um, you know, for things we had a couple things in transition just break down, and that's what it really comes down to. It just comes down to your concentration, and you know, your want to. You know, you got to be able to want to to get the job done and be able to see it. And um, you know, we got to do a better job of, of doing simple things. And that's the game of basketball, mm -hmm. you know, the repetition of simple things. That's what discipline really is. You know, 
of discipline comes down to being able to do fundamental simple things over and over and over again. So I guess kind of along the same lines where you've talked before about being able to finish the rim as a product of concentration as well. Yeah. Is that kind of the same issue? Do you see guys missing because of that or do you see uh, you know, the stuff getting challenged? Is that kind of the biggest thing that stood out to you? It's, it's both. You know, you're going to have a defense that's out there. Mm -hmm. um, but no, you know, we, we wanted to get Trey on the basketball. And uh, you know we wanted to get him in some of those, those spots. We wanted to get downhill on ball screens and, and be able to attack them and make layups. And um, then when they did cover us, we wanted to be under control and play on two feet. Um, some of them are offensive rebounds. Some of them are cuts. Um, some of them are post plays. Um, but we wanted to stay away from a lot of the in between shots. You know we wanted to be able to get some threes, get post ups, get layups. And when you're doing that, you're gonna get to the free throw line more. You know the ones we did get, I thought we got some. You know, we, we, we just got to convert. We got to concentrate and convert. Looks like you spent a good deal of the game with your two on their four and four on their two. Was that because of what their fours can do away from the basket, both shooting off those ball screens, but also driving? Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. But um, Boudreaux guarded Wagner some. And then we would have yeah. Sasha starting on them. Like twos and threes are interchangeable. Um, so it's no big difference. Did you want to guard on their forward, though? Um, Did you want to guard somebody? I want to run our test mobile. on all of them. <laughs> That's what I want. Okay. I want Alvin Robertson, um, Scotty Pippen. Um, no, you just, you know, you're trying your best. Yeah. We've had a couple of fours in the last couple of games. Um, you know, really play well against us. Elaine Ford, mm -hmm. Kyle Young, two different types right. of players. Um, we matched up with our fours, Elaine Ford more. We matched up. With our four and five with Kyle Young, and both those guys had played well. And Aleem really stretched us out from a defensive standpoint. So now, with who we started, you know, we just have a decision to make with Livers. You know, yeah. and um, I have a high opinion of Livers, but I also have a high opinion of Wagner. And so both of them can shoot, both of them can drive. Livers has been more consistent. Obviously, he's older. His numbers, he has this high, more of a high volume makes um, per game because obviously he hasn't played in all the games. And his percentage has been higher, um, but yet Wagner still has done it um, at a lower percentage and a lower volume. But you know, we're just playing for this one game, that's all that matters. So you play the numbers a little bit in terms of who can react to who and what actions they can put them in. I can't control entirely what they're going to do, um, I can only kind of match it up. We're going to switch some too, mm -hmm. so it's going to get you know intertwined. We're going to have to guard everybody at some point, but you want to stay with certain matchups. Like, I want to. That isn't as important to me as like who Xavier Simpson, who's guarding him. Like you got to keep certain people on him. He's just does such a good job of breaking down people um, in, in some of those switches. So, but uh, no, they I, I think they did a, a better job offensively in, in getting the ball to Wagner and in getting him into some space and getting him into some action. With that being said, I also think we have some simple breakdowns um, that that can be corrected. Coach Sasha and Trey both said. Right now, it's tournament, no tournament time. Does that mean you had that discussion in the locker room? Are you letting those guys discuss that amongst themselves? Right. No, we have that discussion every day for the whole year. You know, building your resume, things that will help you, things that hurt you. Um, the thing that's discouraging is, is the competitive part of it for us. Like that, to me, like to that, wasn't we weren't very competitive. Like, in, in, in who you are is when adversity sets in. So we didn't have things go our way, but you can still have a fight. Like if you just walked out of there and say, hey man, we just fought Michigan. They were just better than us. You know, you don't like it, but you live with it and you deal with that. You know, I thought Evan Boudreaux, I liked his fight. Like you look at his stat sheet, like, you know, he got 15 rebounds. You know, is there some other areas that, you know, you'd like him to be better? Yeah, and he would like to be better too. And like, you know, you try to fix it and you watch film and you correct it, but you can't sit there and say he didn't play hard. You know, if like we had everybody play as hard as he did today, I think we'd have made this a game or had a chance to win it. And we, we just, we, we have too many people wallowing like in whatever. Like, you know, I mean, each person's different. So for me to give you a general answer about eight different guys, you know, I can't. You know, I, mean, I, just, I just can't do that. It's hard um, to really explain sometimes. It just is. To have a general answer about your team when you got seven or eight different guys that can't get over whatever the hell it is. And so, but I, I do know when someone plays hard, you know, I know that, and I thought he played really hard. But you get that way with especially mature people and older people because he, he can't play college basketball here after two, three, four weeks, whatever it is. And so, like, you're like, damn, like, 
this is getting ready to be over, man. I'm gonna hook, I'm gonna get hooked up. Whereas someone who's a sophomore subconsciously is not thinking about the right things. I don't think consciously we have anybody in there. They're like, the hell with this. I don't, I don't, I don't like that. I think we have good guys, um, but it's sometimes a byproduct of youth that you're not always dialed in. And we weren't dialed in. This is kind of a broken record because I think I said this in the Penn State game. I didn't think we were dialed in there, but and it's different things. Like Penn State really shot the ball well. They made 14 threes. These guys didn't. Like these guys didn't come in here and hit 15 threes and beat us. You know, they hit six threes, but they did a great job in an area of, of ball control that really gave themselves a chance to play, and they played really good you know, at the end of the first half. Was it easier to dial in for Indiana with them coming to town? Nothing's really that easy um, in terms of competition. But, you know, I don't know. I, that answer is not for me. You know, just I can't, I can't give you that answer. I don't know that. Um, you know, we've had stretches where we, we've played better, but we've been inconsistent. I think anybody that covers us consistently would say that. You know, it's, it's hard um, to, to figure that out. I like our guys. Um, I like our pieces. Sometimes I don't like our pieces together. And I, you know, and sometimes I think too much about our opponent. Sometimes I think too much about our team. Um, but, you know, you're not going to stop trying. You're not going to you know, stop trying to help them. Um, and that's what we, we got to be able to do. You know, you got to be able to regroup. You know, champions always get off the canvas. So we'll see. Is there anything else? Thanks.